That's right. Anthony Joshua ducking Deontay Wilder in 2018 is a myth, right? So obviously, you know, there's this narrative that AJ ducked Deontay Wilder back in 2018, um, you know, when obviously both guys were world champions. You know, a lot of people thought that Anthony Joshua, you know, cherry-picked Alexander Povetkin to avoid a Deontay Wilder. While Deontay Wilder wanted to fight AJ, but AJ was, you know, uh, didn't want to fight them, or to, to fight him, excuse me. So I thought I'd debunk this myth uh, because it's complete nonsense. But yeah, anyway, let's get into this. So um, how it all starts, you know, Anthony Joshua comes off a win against Joseph Parker uh, to unify all three belts. You know, he unified the uh, WBA, the IBF, and the WBO, which Joseph Parker had at the time. Right. And, you know, that was considered to be like a big fight, considering AJ was unifying all three world titles. Right. And he unified the I guess the IBO, but that's not really a major world title. So, you know, the point is, is that he, you know, unified three major world belts and he was one step closer to unifying all four major world belts. Right. The last one being what uh, Deontay Wilder had. Right, Deontay Wilder, on the other hand, came off a win against uh, Luis Ortiz, and a lot of people uh, were considering that to be his best win at the time. Right, they were saying that, uh, you know, Luis Ortiz, because he was an undefeated uh, heavyweight, you know, that was Wilder's best win to date. Whether I agree with that narrative is not the topic of this video, but that's just how people were saying it. So, we just got to go uh, with it like that. So, uh, yeah, they were coming off to big wins and you know at the time there were talks between them for a unification fight right Anthony Joshua held the WBC or excuse me the WBA IBF and WBO uh, heavyweight world titles while Deontay Wilder held the WBC heavyweight world titles so it was going to be a huge fight you know Deontay Wilder was considered to be the hardest puncher in the division at that point, while Anthony Joshua was considered to be, you know, not as, doesn't hit as hard as Deontay Wilder, but is a lot, but, you know, still has power and is uh, a lot more technical than Deontay Wilder, right? So, um, you know, that that's kind of how the fight was billed as, and it was going to be a good fight. And a lot of boxing fans wanted to see it, and, you know, you know the rest. So, at the time, um, there was only one problem, though. The WBA was uh, telling Joshua's team, "Okay, you can make, you can try and make this unification fight with Deontay Wilder, but if you're unable to make it, then you have to fight Alexander Povetkin, the WBA mandatory challenger. Otherwise, we're going to strip you of your world title uh, if you don't fight Povetkin." So this gave Joshua's team a limited amount of time, and Eddie Hearn kept asking. Uh, the WBA for extensions surrounding, you know, when they were going to come up with a decision. So the WBA gave uh, Joshua's team, Joshua's team six weeks to come up with a decision re uh, revolving around the Deontay Wilder fight, right? Now, during the six week period, uh, Eddie Hurd's team and Deontay Wilder's team just couldn't come up with an agreement, right? You know, like Deontay Wilder just wanted too much money, right? And he was just kind of make it, making it more complicated than it, how it was, right? And, uh, you know, there were also like, you know, talks of where the fight was going to take place. I think Wilder kind of wanted it to be in the U.S. And then obviously Joshua wanted it to be in the U.K. And that's just kind of how it was, right? So, you know, the... Uh, how do I say it? talks of a unification bout kind of fell flat, right? However, um, during sort of like the end week of the six week period that the WBA gave Eddie Hearn, um, they finally came up with an agreement. It was something like Deontay Wilder's team was uh, given $15 million while eight, uh, Anthony Joshua was given a bit more. You know, I think that's kind of how it went. It went something like that, but um. Yeah, that's uh, that's how the fight went, or that's how the how talks went. So, they both agreed. They both agreed on fighting for that amount of money. So Eddie Hearn sent a contract to Deontay Wilder's team, 
and you know Deontay Wilder's team got the contract right and it was for obviously AJ and Wilder to fight now um, what happened was Shelly Finkel at the time who was on Wilder's team got the contract and he told Eddie Hearn he said okay I've signed the contract right but I have a few notes for the contract that I will get back to you within a week's time right and you know Eddie Hearn replied to this and basically he you know he was kind of replying in interviews as well saying okay you know the WBA is cracking down on us and you're saying that you're going to get a contract to me within a week's time and he was saying that you know it should only take 48 hours to get a contract back to us in time right and at that point uh, Eddie Hearn and Joshua's team they had to make a decision considering they weren't given enough time to you know uh, make that fight with Wilder happen otherwise you know the WBA was going to do something so Anthony Joshua ended up fighting Alexander Povetkin and Wilder went a different route and that's how it was so I guess the question is did Anthony Joshua uh, duck Wilder to fight Povetkin the answer is no right the answer is no because here's the thing so Eddie Hearn got the contract to Deontay Wilder's team right and Wilder's team knows that the WBA is, you know, has at this point given Joshua's team like only a bit of time um, to make the Wilder fight happen, right? So they're basically what they're saying is that yeah, I'm gonna take or I'm gonna put some notes down on the contract and then I'm gonna get it back to you within a week's time, right? When at the time the WBA had only given you know Joshua's team a few more days to come to make the fight happen right otherwise they were going to strip him so it just doesn't make sense that okay so basically what you're saying is that you know the WBA is giving us only a limited amount of time but you you want to get the contract to us within a large period of time or a somewhat large peri period of time within a week's time right and here's the thing like you know Say even that did happen, right? That Shelly Finkel was going to, like, he kept his word about um, getting the contract back to Eddie Hearn within a week's time, right? You know, it's a huge risk because the WBA might have already come up with a decision and said, okay, no, we're going to, you know, put the nail in the coffin and we're going to, you know, strip you of your world title, right? So then Joshua only fights Wilder for the IBF and for the uh, WBO world titles. So he's on, overall, he's only fighting for three world titles, right? While he's, you know, scrapping his other one for Pavekin to fight. You know, his, Pavekin would have fought for a vacant world title. You know what I mean? That just doesn't make sense to me, right? But, um, but here's the thing with that contract is that just because Shelly Finkel said that he was going to get the contract to Eddie, Eddie Hearn's team within a week's time, that's not a guaranteed, oh, you, yeah, I'm going to give you the contract. Right. Because what if, I don't know, Shelly Finkel for some reason said, oh, I got some more notes I have to make. So it's going to take a, a longer amount of time. And then it would have taken two weeks or even three weeks or a month or whatever. Right. Something like that. You know what I mean? So in that case, that means that not only does AJ get stripped of the WBA, but he doesn't even fight for Wilder's WBC belt. So that means that he's, he's only left with the IBF and WBO heavyweight world titles. I mean, you know, it's a it's a lose lose situation, right? Because you know you're either fighting for three belts, or you're fighting for you're not fighting for the belts. You know what I mean? It's like you just keep your IBF and WBO. You only have two world titles at this point, right? So in this case, Joshua he didn't duck Deontay Wilder, right? I'm not saying Wilder nearly. Um, uh, excuse me. I'm not I'm not saying that Wilder necessarily ducked Anthony Joshua. But if you're going to say anyone ducked anyone, then you should say, yeah, Wilder's team kind of, you know, stalled with the contract, you know. And, you know, you could say, yeah, they kind of ducked AJ, you know, to make, because they kept trying to, you know, like, they, they weren't cooperative enough is what I'm saying, right. And anyway, then there's this narrative that Pavekin or Anthony Joshua Cherry picked Pavekin. You know, people said, oh, Anthony Joshua Cherry picked an old over the hill Alexander Povetkin, who was a midget, he was only six feet two or something, while Deontay Wilder went to fight Tyson Fury, 
you know, Tyson Fury is a six foot nine giant, and he's in his prime. He's a young lion and all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, Povetkin is literally a better fighter than Deontay Wilder, right? We already know this. He's a lot more technical, right? He's got better timing, you know, and he doesn't rely on just one punch to end a fight. You know what I mean? We know this. Anyone who's looked back at Povetkin's career knows that Povetkin was a good fighter, right? I mean, Alexander Povetkin at the time, you know, had, was a former WBA world champion. You know, he beat Ruslan Shagaev for the WBA world title, who uh, at the time beat Nikolai Valiev, you know, that the Russian giant uh, for the for the WBA title, right? So he was obviously a legitimate champion, you know what I mean? And, you know, he went to beat guys like Hasim Rahman, right? Um, what, Marco Huck? You know what I mean? Um, uh, Marzius Rock, right? He went to defend his titles a few times. And he even fought Vladimir Klitschko in a fight that many uh, thought was controversial. You know, a lot of people thought Vladimir Klitschko was cheating in that fight, right? I'm not going to talk too much about that one, but basically it went to a decision and that's how it went, right? And that was Povetkin's only loss at the time. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know, at the time... Anthony Joshua fought Povetkin. He said, okay, I'm going to go knock this guy out. And that's what he did. He was the first guy to to have knocked out Alexander Povetkin, right? You know, and people say, oh, but, you know, Povetkin was old at the time, so it doesn't count. There, <laughs> there's literally been older champions in the history of, you know, not just boxing in general, but even the heavyweight division, right? That, you know, where boxers past the age of 40, become champions. I mean, just look at George Foreman. He was champion at what? Like, you know, 45 years old. Evander Holyfield, even when he fought Nikolai Valley, he was, he was completely robbed in that fight to have won the world, the WBA world title. You know what I mean? And we know that he should have won that fight. And he was 46 years old, right? Bernard Hopkins was like, what, 50 years old when he became champion. You know what I mean? There's multiple fighters in the division or in, in the sport who have, you know, overcome father time to become champion, right? So that's not an excuse. And Povetkin wasn't even that old, right? He wasn't even that old. He was, what, 39 years old. That, that's how old he was, 38, 39, or, yeah, 38, I don't know, something like that, right? And that's what it was, right? So, yeah, this idea that AJ Cherry picked Povetkin is nonsense. This idea that AJ ducked Deontay Wilder is nonsense. AJ has shown that he's serious about unifying belts, and becoming undisputed champion and making history. He's shown that he's serious about that. And that's that. So the myth is debunked that AJ ducked Deont Deontay Wilder. Right? At the end of the day, AJ didn't duck Deontay Wilder. Wilder's team stalled with contract issues. And that's what happened. So, yeah. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, but I know I haven't been making videos like this for, a for quite a bit of time now. The reason is because I've been quite busy, but, um, you know, hopefully in the future I can make more videos like this one. So, um, yeah, uh, that'll be interesting. Or And, yeah, just look out for that. But, uh, yeah, anyway, let me know if you want me to debunk any other myths surrounding Anthony Joshua, because I'd love to do it, whatever it is. But, um, yeah, anyway, that's going to be uh, going to do it for this video. Hope you guys have a good day or night, wherever you are. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you next one. Take care and peace.